Hello everyone, my name is Sonny Cockett and welcome back to another video. I hope you guys are doing well. I'm doing alright, apart from my sore thumb. I just broke my nail on the door, so you know, that's great. And today we're going to be doing another tech video. It's been a while, uh, so we're going to address that. So we're going to be talking about creating your own watch face for the Galaxy Watch. It's much more simpler than you think. So for the people that want their watch faces and they have gone through all the list of different watch faces that they've seen, but they want one with a particular background, particular indexes, particular hands or whatever, you can all do that yourself if you're willing to either design them, although you don't have to. Um, I mean, something as simple as a background, if you just want to change the background, you can do that too. And we're going to show you all of that right here on the laptop. Now, in order to make this work, you need to have a laptop that can be connected on the same network as the watch over Wi-Fi. Alternatively, there is also some other way of doing this, but I would really recommend just being on the same Wi-Fi. It is much easier that way. Now, when you've done that, you need to install the Galaxy Watch Designer. You can get it from Samsung's website. I'll give a link in the description down below as well as put it up on screen now. And you download that and you'll be able to create your own watch faces. Pretty darn simple. So why don't we dive in and show you what it has to offer and show you how I created my own watch face, which I have given a retro minimalistic uh, kind of feel with all the information that you need. And of course, keeping battery saving in mind. Okay, let's go and take a look. So first of all, you want to, like I said, download the Galaxy Watch Designer. You could just Google it, it's very easy and go into there and then what you want to do is you want to download the beta for windows or mac depending on what you want and uh, there you go now you install that and then you get the galaxy watch designer as an application on your computer now you have to have a relatively okay powerful computer for this because the rendering of the images is taken care of pretty poorly. So don't try and squeeze 4K images in this 360 by 360 pixel watch, okay? So don't put any like large images on this watch or we're gonna have some trouble. So this is the one that I designed, uh, the minimalistic one. Let's open that one up. So once the Galaxy Watch Designer is open, it's actually pretty darn simple. Uh, you can create a new project or select uh, one that has already been uh, like uh, preset by Samsung, uh, go on from there. Um, but what I really like here is just the interface. It's, it's actually pretty easy, although there are some things that are very hidden. For example, buttons is under this little thing here. I don't know why, it makes no sense, anyhow. Um, you have on the left here all the things that you can drag into it. The left is your composition, so what you're working with, and on the right is a simulation of the watch as it's running. You can play that as you want, uh, set the day, set the time, you know, it's a little simulation to show you how everything updates and how everything will look. So, on the left here we got backgrounds, we have some preset ones, and then you can also add your new ones. I recommend putting images in here that are no larger than 1000 by 1000, but preferably 512 by 512, and then it will shrink down to 600, uh, 360 by 360 in the app. But just because, like, because you're getting a little bit of a larger image and shrinking it down, you get a little bit more quality out of it. So if you have a highly detailed image, get it to like 512 by 512 pixels, and then put it in the display here. Uh, so let's add this background, for example. It already presets everything because this image is 360 by 360 pixels. You can see that it actually automatically scales to that uh, particular size. So if I wanted to have the background, I could, and then control Z to go back. Then there is indexes here. So there's some predefined indexes here that you can choose from if you want to. I currently have none because it's not an analog clock, but if you want to make it an analog clock, that is actually pretty easy and, and doable. And then there's the watch hands. So you can have different hands, hour, minutes, seconds. There's already some predefined ones in there. So you got classic, decorative, uh, fashion, gentle, things like that, or you can mix and match if you want to, or use three of the same ones and just give them a different time zone. So for example, I got a second hand here, and then on the right hand side here in the properties tab, we can sync it with the hour of day. So that's what the second hand is doing right now. We don't want that, we want it a second in minutes, okay? So now it's gonna sync with the seconds amount of, uh, and, and the amount of seconds in minutes. So you can see here that if I move the time, it moves around, 
like the seconds would. So 43 seconds, that's right here. That's correct. So uh, that's how you can do that. You could also set that to, like I said, uh, hours and day, minutes and hours, day of a month, month of a year. You can do analog dates as well if you want to. Maybe a good example would be to use my other, um, my other project. So there is another project that I have. Uh, let's open that one up. Uh, so this is the one that is based on my own analog watch that I used to use. Uh, this one in particular. So I'll show you that right now. If it will just focus. There it is. So that's the watch that I've been using. And uh, this is basically sort of a mimic from that. So, you know, it might actually be kind of cool to recreate an analog watch in a digital version. So what I've done here is I have added my Sunday, Monday, Tuesday analog one right here. Uh, this also used to have the date and the hour uh, indicators here, but on this watch, it makes no sense. And it's super hard to read, to read a, a day of a month through analog. It makes no sense. Uh, it's really difficult to read, but for some people, you know, if they want that, then they can do that. So it would be just re really be simple to just add a, your own uh, index here. So I have one right here. Let's unlock this one. Let's see. There we go. It's unlocked. So I have an index right here. Let's see the analog date of week. There we go. Analog date of week. So there's my one. You could also group things if you want to. So it's really easy to organize your thing. So here's my date of week uh, hand and it is just an image that rotates. That's all it does um, based on the hours that it has. So here you can see it syncs with the day of the month and it has some predefined things. So every time I go and uh, uh, go ahead and uh, increase uh, the week. So let's go and increase the days. You'll see that it moves on the right. You see that it moves on the right. Uh, let's see. It's syncing with the day of the month. It shouldn't do that. It should sync with the day of the week. There we go. So now you can see that it moves around in a circle every day and it does the right percentage difference that you want to. So it's actually, like I said, really easy to just swap out some indexes, resize them, put them in the way you want them to and make it look completely different if you want to. Um, on this particular watch, I designed the, uh, the indexes myself, which is the blue and the, the dots and everything. To do that, you'd need to use something like Photoshop that has some stuff that you can do to implement indexes really easy through the use of a path circle. Um, once you get the hang of it, it's actually pretty cool. You have to do some research on that uh, because honestly, I don't remember it myself either. <laughs> uh, for the people that do are into who are into Photoshop, they'll be able to create their own indexes. But for the simplest of people, it is probably just going to be down to using the uh, let me get back here. There we go up in the top here. So if you are in a folder up in the top here, you can go back. Uh, re really not the most intuitive design in terms of interface, but hey, and then I added a month thingy right here and in a, a number that just increases as well as the day and uh, yeah, my normal index is in a battery indicator that changes like this. So a little circle that changes like that. So white to yellow and then red. Uh, these are all individual images and it basically swaps between them depending on the battery level. So if we want to do that, we can actually go into this tab here, the battery. And if we go to the battery status map folder right here. So here are all the images for 5%, 10%, 20%, 30, 40, 50, 90. I've just created a bunch of images really. Um, and you can determine here on this graph when they show up. So you can say, Image 100 shows up between levels 95 and 100. Uh, and then for, of course, 80, it shows up between 80 and 95. Uh, and then 70% shows up for 70 to 80. S sort of like that. You can basically drag around here and tell it when to activate that particular image. So I'm just going to remove that. I actually didn't add anything. You have to go about that. And then let's see show there you go you gotta select them and then right click and show that's what you got to do so we're just going to do that hide 
and there we go. So that's in the case of batteries, if you want to do that. Um, then there's also some other things that you have. So you got a, a digital clock version as well, if you want that. So let's go back to the timeline here. Let's go to my watch, back to the timeline. Uh, and here we have uh, the digital clock. So you have a digital clock that you can add and you can set this to any of the predefined methods. The, here are the formats. You got a lot of in, uh, in here, the error des des designator, year, uh, year of week of year, B bunch of stuff really uh, that are predefined or you can create your own. Uh, if you search up some formats and the notations of them in the terms of programming, like uh, HH, MM, SS for hours, minutes and seconds, if you figure out what those formats are, it's actually pretty easy to just plop them in here and create your own watch uh, design in terms of a digital clock. It can also show the months, it can also show the days, dates, weeks, you name it, it can show it. Just like my old, my uh, new red one. Um, I don't know if I can make this available to public to you guys. Maybe I will be able to, and in that case, it's gonna be really cool. I'll see if I can put it up on the Samsung store for free. But anyhow, let's uh, go to the next tab. So you got also some images that you can do. So there are already some predefined images in here. There's also one that's called light here, which has a little bit of a glow effect, uh, depending on the, like uh, with, the, with the, well, actually it's just a, a background really, this one in particular. Uh, there's also a couple of things that you can also add some uh, effects to things if you want to. So there are, for example, gyro effects that you can do on certain things. So let's grab this handle for the seconds. And then you can go to the bottom of the properties or actually it's not available for this one. Let's try it for the background. Let's see, watch face. Let's go in there and then let's go for the background. All right, no, the shine. Well, actually, let's just show this. So let's grab this one. And here you can see that some extra effects show up, Gy gyro effects. So this only affects images really, it looks like, but you can add a gyro effect. So depending on what your gyroscope on the watch is doing, you can make it look differently if you want to. So you got to fiddle, fiddle around with that if you want to. Personally, I've not made any use of it because I thought it would just drain more battery. So I didn't use that. Um, then there is also text in here. So there's some compl normal complications. So you can do normal text if you want to, or greeting or something, or the battery percentage, the battery charging status. It's either a zero or a one. A battery level, steps in percentage. So how much of your steps you have done. Uh, step count, step goal, speed, moon phase. A bunch of stuff in here really. Weather type as well. A bunch of stuff that you can define uh, to put on the screen here. Caffeine intake the amount of caffeine that you've taken, you can put that as a number on screen if you want to really easily. And then there is some animations as well that you can put in here. Um, these don't actually animate, do they? Yeah, it is, they, they don't. I thought they would because they're included with the Samsung thing, but I guess they don't. Anyhow, oh, actually they do, but you have to import them all and then animate them. That's how it works, okay. Uh, and then there's also complications. So you got your time thingies here. So there's actually some predefined ones of day of week, um, date digital, um, another day digital, M many multiple versions of here, second hands as well, and some other analog things that you can define by yourself if you want to and design it all to your liking. Then there is the battery in the analog version, so that's pretty cool. Makes it look like some fuel indicator or something. Uh, workouts or your speed, uh, your steps, that sort of thing. Water intakes as well, caffeine, heart rate. It can show your heart rate here in real time if you want to. Uh, you can only have a couple active at once. If you have heart rate, for example, on the home screen, you won't be able to show something like steps. I think that was the way it was. Um, but there are some problems with that. It really sucks. It means that you can't really, well, you can't really just show off one thing and then another thing. I don't know. I think, I think it's a limitation of the software. I think if you were to use a the development kit that they use and program it yourself, you will be able to do that. But in terms of, uh, what we can do here in the Galaxy Designer, we can't do that, unfortunately. And some extra effects. So here's that light effect that I have in the background. So it's a light effect and it is attached to the gyro and it just moves depending on where the gyro is located. So if you move the gyro, you can see that this is what happens. It just moves the shine around, makes it look like it's reflective when it really is not because it's glass, you know. <laughs> it's a display, it doesn't shine, so. You can add an artificial one if you want to. And that is really the Galaxy Watch designing. You can design whatever the hell you want in here. 
Uh, and this is the one, like I said, that I have made. This is the analog version, although I'm not that much of a fan of that one. I eventually just went to the digital version because it was more minimalistic and you can also use it to reduce battery life. For example, here I've got most of the display black, which means low battery usage. And it also means for the always on display. So if we go to the top right here, we got the always on display. So if you swap between those, you can delete stuff if you want to, that you don't want to show there. Uh, seconds never show in always on mode, only minutes and hours. Uh, so it doesn't update too frequently. And you can show again here whatever you want. So I have shrunk in the dates. I have um, removed the second hand and the battery percentage is still there just for convenience sake. And then you can also play it in real time here if you want to. Uh, so let's go for a Galaxy Watch Active 240 millimeter, for example. You can show what it looks like on those particular watches. So Galaxy Watch 46 millimeter, this one, this is my one. That's how it will look like. and. Well, it looks pretty accurate to me, I have to say. So, with that done, uh, there's a couple of things that you need to do. So, first of all, you can run it on your device. So that's how I got it running on my device. Is you need to go into your Galaxy Watch. You need to go into Settings. You need to go to the bottom, all the way to the bottom, to the About Watch section. And then there, you go to the bottom again, and then a little bit to the top, there's debugging on and off. You want to set that to on, okay? That's one thing. Then what you also want to do is you want to go to your Wi-Fi and you want to connect to your local Wi-Fi. So I'm going to do that right now. I'm going to connect to your local Wi-Fi. Set that to always on. Okay. And let me just log into my Wi-Fi because every single time, every single time I connect to Wi-Fi after it remembers it, it never connects. I don't know why. And I have to forget it and do it again. So let's do that. And I am connected. There we go. And what you can do now, or what you should be doing, is restart the watch. But maybe it will work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tap the Wi-Fi again. And then I'm going to go to Wi-Fi Networks. And I'm going to click on the one that I'm connected to. Scroll to the bottom and it shows the IP address. In my case, 192.168.216. So I'm going to go into this interface. I'm going to go to the plus here. And it's still in the memory. And that's where you want to enter the IP. Then you can say connect. And let's see if it can actually find it or it has trouble, in which case I have to restart the watch. You can also scan the entire network if you want to. Uh, and there we go, it shows up. And then we can click on it and push this current build of the application to our watch. So if you don't want to share it on the store, you could just do that, uh, but it does require you to fill in a couple of paper uh, paperwork. Uh, you need an author certificate and a distributor certificate. They're pretty easy to get, actually. Uh, you can generate them. Uh, let's see, generate a new certificate signing uh, request. You can generate them, create them. It just is some basic stuff that you have to fill in, like about your company, that sort of thing. I mean, my company, I've just given my own website, whatever. Uh, give them whatever. Maybe you don't even need that. And once the certifi uh, certificates are done, you can then build your app using this icon, the build or press F10. And after that, you can actually upload it to the market. Or like I said, run on device F9 to just push it to the device and use it as is. So that's what I've done. I've just pushed it to my device and that's all I've really done. And now I'm free to use it with whatever the hell I create in here, which is pretty cool. So, uh, and if you want some help with distributing stuff, there's also some stuff at the top here, like uh, align vertically, align horizontally, distribute across the horizontal or vertical planes, space evenly on the horizontal or vertical planes. Uh, you can send it to the foreground, to the background, that sort of stuff is all in here. Uh, you can create new projects, whatever you want to. Uh, let's see, you can even export an encrypted project. So in case you want to be secluded about it, you can as well. Uh, you can show a grid, ruler, all that stuff is built in. Uh, the rulers don't work the way I want it to. I would love for them to be working like the ones in Adobe, where you just click and drag it over the actual interface, but I don't know. <laughs> and ruler has no much, not much point in here. But anyhow, uh, that is how the Galaxy Watch Designer works. And now you can create your own watch faces. If you have any further questions, please do let me know and I'll clear it up in another video. I'm sure I've missed a couple things, but Anyhow, I've been talking for long enough and this video is long enough now and I still have to edit this and then go to continue streaming because I'm addicted to Elite Dangerous again. Anyhow, that is how to create your own watch face. Hopefully you guys enjoyed and uh, 
yeah, let me know if you need to know anything else. So thank you for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.